So next talk um, is from Maximilian. Um, he is networker and open source hacker, as also a Debian fanboy, uh, as he calls himself. Uh, he works uh, on day shifts as a senior network architect and infrastructure architect at the University of Paderborn, and is in the night uh, responsible for Frei von Kochstift. And uh, yeah, he will now present something he is doing has done on last weeks and last months. Um, it's all about. Um, Intent-driven, fully automated deployment of any cast load balancers with HA proxy, sorry, and Python. Bingo. Does this work? Yes. Um, thanks for the introduction. We heard a lot about YAML before. I will talk about YAML too. Um, who am I? Stefan already introduced me. A little bit of context, where I'm from, what was the past, what was our idea to make the world a better place, and what is it now? Um, I work at the Paderborn University, which has about 20,000 students, 2,500 employees, so some user base. We do uh, the central IT for the educational part for all the students, obviously, and for some of the um, faculty employees. We do the IDM stuff, LDAP, Kerberos, Active Directory, uh, all the mail stuff, all the nasty bits, uh, awful lot of websites, some two-digit or three-digit number of web servers for stuff. E-learning, uh, Moodle, maybe known, or Paul, which uh, is uh, the Paderborn version of uh, CampusNet, which is built here in Hamburg. Um, SharePoint, file services, the internet, and you know. So most of these things want to be load balanced, starting from the IDM, the mail stuff, the web stuff, e-learning, SharePoint, well, the internet is easy, you can route it. So, what did we do in the past? Well, this looked like something like this. We had two F5 load balancer boxes. We all only have one left. The other one uh, went out of magic smoke some month ago. And the only thing uh, still running on this box is the LDAP service. We hope to change this soon. Those boxes were connected to the layer two fabric built by Cisco Nexus. We are a green box vendor, locked in company. Um, have a lot of uh, Nexus installations. This is some years old. We have more than uh, this setup. We have some blade centers with uh, VMware ESX and some uh, racks full of hardware stuff. So this is the, the basic design. The uh, VIPs are routed statically to the uh, VRRP IP of the active load balancer. The um, service networks are logically behind the F5, or were logically behind the F5, so the F5 can forward the traffic to the, the backend nodes, and the F5 was the router, obviously. So there was no easy filtering between the service networks. There was a Cisco ACL on the transfer net between the uh, Nexus 7000 and the F5 boxes. And all this Nexus stuff is a layer two fabric with lots of VLANs, which can be configured everywhere. No EVPN, nothing, because it works. Did I miss anything? Oh yes, and the F5 went out of everything end of 2018. And everything is configured manually, obviously, and monitoring too, which was a problem. So this is a past, luckily. Um, we had an idea. It looked something like this. We want to think of something we call a service. What this will be will be defined soon. Um, a service co should automatically configure uh, iSinger2, which we use for monitoring. So if we define something which is a service which provides something, it should automatically be monitored. Because if it's relevant in a production, it has to be monitored. If it's not monitored, it's not relevant. Um, we thought about, hey, let's test this HA proxy thing. So HA proxy should be configured too if we want to load balance this thing. Maybe we need heartbeat for some active passive setups for uh, MariaDB and stuff because, uh, well, we didn't uh, have the guts yet to set up Galera. Um, if it's one of those many web servers, we want to configure the Apache primarily or the Nginx maybe automatically from this service configuration and build more templating for that. And any cast is cool, so route reflection might be an interesting idea. That was around two years ago. Cool. Uh, that what's missing there should be service. Um, a service is a central config element, or is the central config element. It uh, can be balanced. 
it may be or may not be, it can be uh, balanced by any cast directly, which makes sense for things like LDAP or Kerberos. Or it uh, can be balanced by HA proxy for more interesting stuff like SharePoint exchange and all the nasty things. Um, if it is balanced, it will have a service VIP, which is announced via BGP to the route reflectors and then back to the Nexus boxes. And it should be active active, if possible. Because why have a backup system running which will consume power and produce hot air and doesn't do anything for it. Monitoring should be configured automatically and we will check the front end or the WIPs and the back end systems. So if we have one front end WIP and let's say two or three back end systems, we want to know if one of the back ends goes down and we don't want to be alerted only if the WIP goes down. And if it's a web server, wait, let's see if we can put more effort into generating the config. And we don't do it now, but it should possibly allow to set up a configuration for HA clusters like Heartbeat or maybe Keep Alive Day in the future. And maybe we want to add a caching layer for the web stuff later, which we don't have today. And all the subnets of the backend networks, which were previously routed by the F5, should be routed by the Nexus boxes. And we want to, like, uh, we want to add some Cisco ECLs so we can, uh, let's, uh, let's uh, say, use more service networks and more, split up more backend networks. Okay, what do we have? We have a working data center net uh, network with the Cisco stuff, we have VLANs, and we have BGP capable routers. That's easy. We have uh, automation, heavy automation, for around 400 to 500 boxes, and we do this with a handful of people. So if we don't automate, we die. We do this by uh, BCFG2, Anyone ever heard of BCFG2 here? <coughs> Three hands, four, more than I expected. Um, it's written in Python. It's uh, comparable to SaltStack, I think. It's uh, easily extendable. Um, we already have config generators for, I think, a two, so we just had to add some features there and add virtual hosts for the VIPs, for the front ends. And we had basic Apache templating, which sucked, but we had something. And the most important part, how people aren't afraid of automation. We like it. So what is a service now? A service has an FQDN, obviously, and we will use the FQDN to resolve the IP address or IP addresses of the service. It was 2018, so we built all this for dual stack. Um, a service has a protocol and a service, think of uh, get and ETC, so get, sorry, get and service something. The, service, the, the double use of the name service is a bit bad, but we hadn't a better name. So the service on dot, the second dot may be something like HTTP. If it's HTTP, we will, we will know it's port 80 and it is uh, TCP. Or you can manually specify it. The uh, blanks between EG and OR would be uh, TCP slash 80 or TCP slash HTTP. Do you see those? No, you don't. It's italic. Um, hmm? it's, missing. it's missing. Well, it's italic on the slides. Um, just guess. Yeah, just guess. Um, <laughs> ah, it's provided by a host of that's uh, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> uh, BCFG2 group. BCFG2 thinks in groups. Uh, a host has a lot of groups which will map to features and bundles and config files. So that could be KDC productive. It may be anycasted. It may be load balanced. And the load balancers may be as well be anycasted. Um, it may be a web thing with special HTTP config in the, the service file with templates, with redirects. Like if it's HTTP, go directly to HTTPS because we live in 2019. And it may have a special monitoring config if we can't derive all the stuff we need. Cool. Can we do something about that? Is this the PDF or the web version? That would have been the YAML definition of a service. <laughs> which has something like FQDN colon and service colon, which would be KDC. Hmm, that's bad. Can we do this a bit better? I can tell you all the stuff, but it's cooler if you can see it. And the PDF had this information. Okay, this would be a YAML configuration, not, not that long. It, um, 
defines a, it would have defined an uh, Kerberos Anycast service. It's Anycasted. It's a Kerberos service, and it's the BCFG2 group with KDC production. And I think that's basically it. Now you would see that uh, the upper snippet would be a default.yaml file. <laughs> what shall I do? Um, because it's a, it's a own config hierarchy uh, directory structure and it has a um, include mechanism and on the, the anycast directory there is a defaults.yaml which defines the anycast true and status productive switches and uh, the rest of the Kerberos configuration which is two lines smaller than before would be in the lower box. So BCFG2 BCFG2 group and uh, stuff. Don't laugh, it's not funny. Um, and it can do inheritance. So it's a directory structure and everything more on the, 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 the deeper directories will override things specified on top. Okay, good thing that's a picture. <laughs> we have the two Nexus boxes. Uh, every, um, every cloud is a VLAN. We have three route reflectors, which is basically a VM running bird. The idea for route reflection was it's easy to configure uh, and generate the bird config, and so I only have to touch the Nexus boxes once. We don't have any automation for the Nexus boxes today. Don't stone me, please. Um, and maybe the network people are afraid of automation a little bit, maybe. So I thought, well, we can do automation for Linux, so let's put in a middle layer, and the uh, route reflectors can filter specifically for uh, the VIPs, which a service may export. So every backend box or the load balancers will set up a BGP session to the route reflectors and announce its VIPs. The load balancer boxes in the middle of the picture um, today have something like 90 or 100 VIPs. Fun fact, it's a bad idea to put an import limit on the route reflectors or the Nexus boxes because if you have more than 30 VIPs, everything is down. Um, monitoring, automatically configured, will check the front ends and the back ends, and we have lots of application uh, services, uh, application networks on the left, and we have some applications which do not allow to use the proxy protocol, so if I open a, a TCP connection to the load balancer, the load balancer opens a TCP connection to the back end, and will use an X forwarded four header or the real proxy protocol, which is supported by lots of software, and tell the back end, hey, I'm a proxy server and the real connection came from this IP. If the service can do that, it's fine. We can put the service anywhere. If the service does not allow to do that and we have some special snowflakes which don't, like LDAP, and because um, we want to do some magic things, if some requests come from a specific IP to our LDAP service, we may want to single it out to a specific backend so we can do debugging. We don't want to uh, any cast LDAP, so we have to put it on the load balancers, and that's why the app uh, one and two boxes, for example, could be the LDAP boxes, which will be routed by the load balancers. It's Linux boxes, so we can do routing. Okay, that's in production for a year now. Lessons learned. Bad NIC firmware is really bad. It's, uh, the load balancers are one rec unit Dell boxes with, I think, Broadcom NICs and they had some troubles with firmware and sometimes the LHCP packets just fall over and the LHCP bundle just died. And 90 seconds later the VIPs were offline because that's the BGP timeout. That's not cool. BFD will solve this. We didn't set it up yet, but we will. And uh, HA proxy configuration, I think we use 1.6 something, not 2.0 yet, uh, is complex. And if you switch some of those config switches, some things happen to a lot of other config switches. And there is no way to ask HA proxy, hey, please give me the complete config which you just are running with. So what's your view of the configuration? It's something HA proxy can't tell you. Well, that's bad. But it works now. The good ones. Um, everything which supports the proxy protocol. I hope OpenLDAP will be on this list sometime. If I find the relevant piece in the code, I will try to hack it in there. But those software just runs with proxy protocol behind any load balancer, that's just fine. The more challenging ones. 
Open LDAP I just talked about. Exchange has funny problems with, with um, Outlook for Mac and some timeouts. We are trying to single those out. We have the example configuration from many websites. We tested a lot and some people still have problems. SharePoint is even more funny. Um, when you don't use TCP mode, there are some things happening on port 443, which someone usually would expect is HTTPS, but it isn't. That took an hour of our life. Um, yeah, that would be a service configuration. Um, one step back. Hmm? It, yeah, it's very simple. That's the charm of the concept, it's that simple. You don't have to write any configuration. It's do what I mean. So we had all this automation. And uh, we had the idea, well, we know for what IP and what ports we have to open the firewall. Previously, we used the TCP wrapper for some historic reasons and we thought about more software, not, more, not um, supporting TCP wrapper anymore, like MariaDB and some other stuff, which is not linked to lib rep or whatever it is. So we wanted to switch to IP tables and later NF tables for Buster systems. All this is based on Debian. So we have this information for the back end and for the front end. So why not just generate some rule sets? And we did. And while doing that, we had the idea, okay, for some services, we may want to open additional ports. Think um, license service, which are special <coughs> snowflake in every regard. You have a master port and every license adds another port. So you can set up a lot of uh, services with all those ports, which sucks, or you can just uh, add a list of ports or ranges which will be opened to, and uh, you can add full access between some boxes or from what some, some sources in the network, which would be in this example. So additional ports can be added and uh, allow, allow from can be added where uh, when we want to restrict the access. By default, the, the access to the service ports is uh, world open. We can restrict those to the load balancers or a part of the university or whatever. Okay, further reading is for later. And now would be time for questions. So, any questions? Um, anyone? besides what was in these boxes. Uh, uh, please don't Actually, ask. this was a secret working group, yeah? Shit. <laughs> so, any questions? Uh, except, please write uh, in, the uh, in the proceedings. Uh, write not a gray and gray, please. Sorry? Not gray and gray. The text, the code snippets. Okay. Well, it looks like it was a problem with the PDF because all uh, PCs available didn't show the text properly. So most likely a rendering error or something. Too bad. Okay, so any questions? So no questions. Thank you very much.